I think this hero basket was something else. And I couldn't agree more with Luca. There were some on and off the court fights, unbelievable upsets, record breaking performances and questionable calls. I'm Gitas from basketnews.com and these are the best moments from the greatest Eurobasket ever. Before the tournament, nobody expected much from Group A, probably best illustrated later by the attendance in Tbilisi. But then this happened. And sure, we have seen bigger fights on the court before, but what makes this unbelievable is that according to Korkmaz, he was attacked in the tunnel by three Georgian players and security guards after he left the court. The Georgian team denied such claims, saying no one slapped or punched anyone. But then the Turkish side responded with a threat to leave the Eurobasket altogether if they don't see the security camera footage from the tunnel. Turkish Basketball Federation President Hido Turkoglu even went as far as saying if Georgia has balls, why don't they show camera footage? Well, we're two weeks removed from the incident and there's still no camera footage, so... Who knows? Oh, and by the way, as the fight was happening on the court, nobody bothered to stop the game clock. And 22 seconds just vanished. But more on the referees later. Coming back to basketball, there were some upsets. Turkey surprisingly lost to Georgia in that match I just talked about, but the biggest upset of the group was Spain being defeated by star lacking Belgium, who managed to crawl their way to the next round. Nonetheless, the Spaniards recovered quickly and in the last game clinched the number one spot, beating Turkey with this clutch defensive play. Well, hit the ball down now. 20 seconds to go, you can hit. Well, turns it over. Yeah. I cannot believe it. They're going to review this probably. Before we get into Group B, can someone please explain in the comments what the hell happened here? What? The group of death, as it was called, delivered in all ways possible. On the first day, the reigning Eurobasket champions had to take a taxi since their bus didn't arrive. Imagine being a taxi driver and taking Luka Doncic and Goran Dragic to the game. I would ask to take a picture at least. I believe that taxi driver was impressed with the company and with the passengers he took the... I don't think he had any yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> really? They didn't know yeah. you. It was going super slow. We were kind of like, hey, let's go, let's hurry up, man. Like, and while that particular taxi driver might have been a football fan or something, the German fans were flooding to the sold-out Lanxess Arena each game to support their team and witness Luka Magic, of course. After retiring Dirk Nowitzki's jersey, Germany put up a show against France, with Maudo Lowe looking like an NBA star out there. Open floor, 3-on-1 break, Lowe. Oh, look at me. Look at that! How do you like me now? While Rudy Gobert was far from a $205 million player. No one expected Germany to start the tournament 3-0. On the same note, Lithuania was considered to be one of the favorites of this group, but started with three losses instead, despite the Lithuanian fans taking over Cologne. Then their destiny fell in the hands of France, with Lithuania needing the French to beat the Bosnians in order to keep their chances alive. The Lithuanian fans made sure that France would have enough motivation to win and showed their gratitude after. Evan Fournier loved it. There's a reason why Group B was nicknamed the Group of Death, as Bosnia and Herzegovina managed to upset Slovenia. They followed it up with a euphoric Bosnian celebration. Unfortunately for them, the songs were later silenced by Lithuania in the do-or-die battle for the playoff ticket. Adding salt to injury, Mirilem Halilovic learned about instant karma the hard way. Beautiful. They get it to Sabonis! And oh, Bukavicius! Must have. So Sabonis doesn't finish, Halilovic really fired up that he challenged it and there's... And did I forget to mention anyone? Ah, yes, Luka Doncic. The Slovenian side started with a W, but then, as I mentioned before, got set back by Bosnia and Herzegovina. That was clearly not in Luka's plans. <laughs> then the Slovenians beat all of the remaining teams and clinched the next round as the winner of the Group of Death. To achieve that, Doncic had to take it to the next level. What's next level for Luka? Not much. 
just delivering the second highest scoring performance in Eurobasket history, thus breaking Nico Gallus' 46-point record. Doncic went nuts against France, scoring 47 points despite being elbowed and slammed around by their players. Group C. It was all about Giannis and Gianmarco Posecco. The Italian head coach took the spotlight with the most authentic Italian passion. Although people seem to have mixed reactions towards him, I gotta say I really love how much passion this man adds to the game. Tecchio takes his time, lines it up, knocks it down! Oh my gosh! Big shot after big shot! <laughs> Moving on to Croatia, they had a legitimate chance to secure the second place in the group, but it seems that calculating who to face in the playoffs got in their heads. In the final group game versus Ukraine, an 8-point win would have accomplished just that. But with 27 seconds to go, Bojan Bogdanovic missed a free throw on purpose and that kept their lead under 8 to potentially avoid Serbia in the quarterfinals. More on how that played out for them later. Also, let's take a moment and appreciate how great Ukraine looked in the group stage. They went 3-2 and, and finished second. Svetoslav Mikhailuk hoped that Ukrainians watching their national team do well in the Eurobasket might bring some smiles to a tormented country. And I think they accomplished just that. Fun fact, Great Britain finished with zero wins and also were the only country to not broadcast their games locally. And last but not least, Yanis gave the fans what they came for right from the start, with a game-winning block and a clutch reverse action. Oh, yes! oh, the ring. This got everybody buzzing and the stands were filling up with names such as Greg Popovich, Chris Middleton and Luis Scola to name a few. Group C turned out to be too small for Yanis as Greece ended up with a perfect record finishing first in the group with the Greek freak averaging 30 points. On the floor, down the lane. Oh! Incredible beast! In the last group of Eurobasket 2022, we kind of got what we expected. Serbia ran through their competition, beating the opponents by 21 points on average, and once again just establishing their status as one of the favorites to win the Eurobasket. At the forefront of the team, we saw a pretty much unchallenged NBA MVP Nikola Jokic, who put up an all-around performance. The cut. Jokic. Gets it and walks. Still, there were some moments that managed to get some spotlight. One of them being the epic battle between NBA talents Lauri Markkanen and Denny Avdia. Overall, Markkanen, or the king in the north as he's called in his country, looked like prime Dirk Nowitzki in the group stage, helping Finland to climb to an unexpected second place. Meanwhile, Avdia showcased his clutch gene. It's Avdia! But that unfortunately wasn't enough for Israel to advance to the playoffs. And now let's move on to the playoffs in Berlin. From here on out it's simple, you either win or you go home. The first day of the knockout stage started wild with none other than Turkey. The Turks managed to come back from a 16 point deficit against France but then completely fumbled it in the end. With 24 seconds remaining, Kvornia stepped out of bounds leaving Turkey in the driving seat to finish the game. Then Luavo Cabarro committed an unsportsmanlike foul, but Chedi Osman missed both free throws and then failed to inbound the ball. With just 3 seconds to go, Rudy Gobert tied the game with a putback dunk and the last possession from Turkey was not successful. The teams had to go to the overtime where the French came on top. Guys, can you honestly think of a more disappointing way to lose the game? Then of course everyone expected Slovenia to breeze through Belgium, but Luka really had to take no rest in order to advance to the quarterfinals. Out of four group of dead teams, only Lithuania got knocked out in the first round. The Spaniards, who said farewell to their golden generation, overcame the underdog status, clinching the spot in the quarterfinals, despite Lithuanians taking the game to the overtime with this crazy buzzer beater. Oh, and they get attempted! Can you believe it? Can you believe it? We've got overtime! Appears that nothing could really top such a crazy day. But then we had a day two of round of 16. Remember Bojan Bogdanovic missing a free throw in order to avoid Serbia in the quarterfinals? All those calculations kind of turn out to be pointless for two reasons. First, Lauri Markkinen went super sane, helping Finland to make basketball history by entering the Eurobasket quarterfinals for the first time ever. And it does! And what a shot! 43 points! 
which also extended Croatia's medal drought that is lasting since 1995. Second reason, we witnessed one of the biggest Eurobasket upsets ever, with Italy eliminating tournament favorite Serbia. Gianmarco Posecco outshined yet another star in Nikola Jokic. Italy's head coach was ejected in the middle of the game, but left the court in the most inspiring way possible. I guess that's unity. They're all in this together. It's quite powerful, isn't it? And he's going to go shake the hands of everybody from Serbia. It's, uh... Then, while waiting for his victorious team near the tunnel in the final seconds, Poseco just couldn't contain himself. See this for yourself. <laughs> And then when you think nothing crazier could really happen, he jumps on Yanis to celebrate the victory. I love you, Yanis. love you. Who knows, perhaps that energy inspired Yanis for what happened next. In a hard-fought battle with the Czech Republic, Yanis Antetokounmpo delivered when it mattered most, by hitting two clutch three-pointers after being 0 from 6 from deep and struggling in the first half. This goes in, it's probably over. Oh, he rattles it in! The Greeks moved up to the next stage and avoided another upset in the Eurobasket. I'm not sure what kind of a moon phase was on the 11th of September 2022, but the second day of playoffs had three of four games won by the betting underdogs. And that's not even the crazy bit. Three of those games ended with the exact same score, while the fourth one was only two points off. With eight teams to go, next up we had the quarterfinals. You can run, you can hide, but you cannot escape Spain with Rudy Fernandez making the semifinals. The Spaniards ended the historic run of Markkanen's Finland. This game brought out the vintage Rudy Fernandez, where the 37-year-old made some really clutch plays. Around this time, his progress impeded Rudy Fernandez for three! Every possession, Spain. Rudy again. Good! Rudy is just rolling back the years right now. And then it was time for the most anticipated game of the quarterfinals. The host Germany came in red hot, draining seven threes in the first six minutes of the game. Here's Schroeder, another three! How many are they gonna hit? But the Greeks responded. And then alley -oop! While the Germans were building the Berlin Wall against Yanis, Greece, or specifically Laren Zakis, was trying to get under the 21-year-old Franz Wagner's skin. Things looked promising for Greece after the successful second quarter, especially since it ended with this. Lucas from a long way out, good! Can you believe it? The second game in a row! Unfortunately for Greece, it was all downhill from there. The trio of Obst, Wagner and Schroeder inspired Germany to a huge 20-1 push at the start of the third quarter. Greece couldn't make a single field goal for almost 8 minutes, and that left them trailing in double digits coming into the fourth. And then all the hope that still remained was lost after this happened. Gets the rebound. Watch the team on. On the collision with Tice oh. under the basket. Yanis was ejected due to a second unsportsmanlike foul, which left Greece without their superstar with 5 minutes left and 14 points down. As you could guess, or already know, that was game over. The Greek hearts were broken that night, while the Germans were having fun at the conference room. Yeah, Dennis wanted my credit card. I said, uh, I've been divorced three times. You're, you're not gonna like the limit on it. <laughs> You know, Yanis being eliminated should have been the story of the quarterfinals, but the second day changed all the headlines. At first, we witnessed what the French like to call déjà vu, which describes perfectly what happened to the French national team. Remember how in the round of 16, Turkey was up by two, shooting two free throws with less than a possession on the game clock? Well, after France once again came back from a significant deficit in the fourth quarter, exactly the same happened. Look at the score too. What hurts the Italians even more, Simone Fontecchio was shooting 89% from the free throw line before that. Despite missing both of his free throws and the game heading into the overtime, Italy's head coach Gianmarco Posecco still showed all the trust in Fontecchio. However, yet another monstrous performance by Rudy Gobert helped France to advance to the semi-finals. How? I don't really know either. The fairy tale of Italy finished with Posecco being Posecco. I feel so lucky that I... They play with these guys. This is. 
Now I'm gonna be honest, Slovenia Poland was probably the only game where I thought the winner was clear before the tip off. It might be that Slovenia had that same thought in their heads too, at least judging by how they came out in the first half. Oh, look at that. AJ Slaughter takes it right away from Luka. He's gonna go in and put it up and in! Then the underdogs kicked it up a notch by going on an incredible 22-2 run. Down by 23 and seeing Luka Doncic holding his lower back going into the locker room, things did not look promising for the defending champions. However, the favorites answered with a dominant 21-3 run of their own in the third quarter. With under 7 minutes to go in the fourth, Slovenians were up by 5 and it seemed that at least one of the big 3 superstars will be in the semis. But the Polish did not let that historic chance slip away and took the lead again with over 5 minutes to go. At the same time, Doncic received a technical foul, followed by two more personal fouls and had to leave the game with 3 minutes remaining and Slovenia down by 4. And that is it. Luka Doncic has picked up his 5th foul. He is gone. Slovenia couldn't come back without their leader and if Italy eliminating Serbia was one of the bigger upsets, I believe Poland delivered the biggest one ever. I also think Poland's coach Igor Milicic summed up his team's performance the best. This is a big bow. Big bow from all our coaches, coaching staff, medical staff. Big bow to you guys. Big bow. You have balls like watermelons and heart like a, like a moon. Great job. This is history, guys. Great job. Don't know about you guys, but for me, Eurobasket had lost most of its magic by the semis. Surely, we still had the medal games ahead, but I believe many of us were hoping to see all three NBA superstars facing each other. Unfortunately, that's not how it works, and not only all three teams got eliminated, but they didn't even face each other. So yeah, at least for me, the semifinals hype was kind of fading out. This was best illustrated by the first game, where France blew Poland away by 41 points, which marked the biggest victory margin in Eurobasket semifinal history. And if you could say France was lucky to pull out all those wins before, this one showed much more of their true potential. I guess Poland's wishes were a bit too ambitious. Let's celebrate! Hey, let's go for the, for the gold! Yeah! The second semi-final battle between Germany and Spain was much closer. Dennis Schroeder showed why he has the best handles in Europe. And Schroeder gets it to go and he's fouled! I thought he was doing too much! Which got instantly approved by the Lakers, officially signing him right after the match. On the other end, Usman Garuba suddenly became a playmaker during the crunch time. Way gets it to Garuba, and oh, then he finds Wancho right before the end of the shot clock. Unfortunately for the hosts, Schroeder's incredible performance was not enough to overcome the genius of Sergio Scariolo, who clearly thought the job wasn't finished yet. That win ensured that Spain's dominance continues as they have won a Eurobasket medal in all tournaments since 1999, with the only exception being 2005. Speaking of 2005, that was the last time Germany won a Eurobasket medal. With Nowitzki in attendance, the German squad managed to end the drought and won the bronze medals against Poland. The dominator, and uh, Germany also has all of these guys. They're around each other all the time, it's not just the players. And of course, the final. Despite wasting a 21-point advantage in the third quarter, Spain kept their lead for most of the game. France stayed true to themselves and again showcased why they were averaging the most turnovers in the Eurobasket. They turned the ball over 19 times and really killed all their chances to come back in the final. This time, Sergio Scariolo pulled yet another trick out of his pocket, Bo Cruz. Uno momento, I have an idea. On a more serious note, Juancho Hernan Gomez hit a total of 7 three-pointers and at one point drained four in a row. Juancho Hernan Gomez, you are kidding me! He received lots of love from Manu Ginobili and his co-star Adam Sandler too. Despite Juancho's incredible performance, the Eurobasket MVP trophy went to his older brother Willy, who had a steady stat line throughout the whole tournament. Spain reclaimed the status of being the kings of Europe by winning their fourth gold medal in 13 years. This time when no one believed in them. Really, who was better, Bo Cruz in Hollywood or Juancho today? Juancho oh. today, <laughs> Juancho today uh, for sure. Uh... 
Just to finish off, I know you're probably thinking, what about the referees? I think to sum it up the shortest way possible, this situation in the final game reflects all you need to know. To go up with it, and the trip is called, and Ertel runs to the other end of the court, and now they've called a technical foul. Watch this. Not only we saw many bad calls or mistakes by the officiating table, but all those were followed up by the referees giving technical fouls to the side that complained about it. And that's really unfortunate. Hopefully though, some changes will come in the future. But let me know in the comments guys, which moments stood out for you the most? As always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more basketball content.